we will give everybody a few minutes to hop on and make their way over to this one since we got a little messed up with the other one as always tends to happen with me i think that i'm finally have it right and i'm in landscape mode and then it turns out that i'm not so Oh, goodness. See, this is working. Right, I think it's working. Can you guys? Sorry, I think it froze. Um, so it seems like you guys are finding it, but for some reason I'm not seeing it on coming up when I pull up my account so that I can see your comments on my iPad. Oh, here we go. There it is, I think. Finally. All right. Let's see if this is the live version. <laughs> I think we got it now. All right, yay, it's working. Hello, everyone. Yay, and now I see your comments too. Yeah, it froze because I accidentally turned, um, I hit my button to like go back to the home screen, which of course turned it off. So I think we are operating everything correctly now. I'm seeing your comments over here on my iPad that I need to set up. And so I'm gonna put you guys now back on our little thing here. So, ironically, I had put you guys up here to begin with because I didn't want to deal with the technical difficulties of trying to move you over from kind of seeing my face to then putting you up on the little tripod thing for the overhead shot. But then I ended up taking you down and trying to figure that all out anyways because of other technical difficulties. So I'm sorry, everybody, for all of my challenges. Oh, goodness. I, one of these days, friends, I'm gonna figure it out. I am gonna figure out how to make it landscape from the very beginning, and I'm going to not need to take it off and on to figure out where the chat is. Just a mess. I, I'd like to blame it on the morning, but I've done live streams at a few different times, and I've always had this problem, so I do apologize, but thank you guys um, for joining me. Yes, exactly. It's not a live stream if there's no techni technical difficulties, but we are only 13 minutes past when I said I was going to get started, so that's not too bad, I guess. I have my coffee in hand. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, it's at my abiding journal, and I talked about uh, making my coffee for this live stream today and this is from Beanbox and I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't actually had my first sip yet. Oh, it is really good. It, um, it talked about having hints of 
chamomile tea which I thought was very interesting and um, I woke up with a little bit of a sore throat so I figured that I would uh, I still wanted coffee I didn't want to go full on tea but I thought a coffee that sort of had hints of tea so they say I'm not really sure I can taste <laughs> chamomile in this but it is very smooth and light um, that that would be a good pick for me and this sign just as a fun FYI um, is from my wedding actually we had a little table that we set up that said journal with me on it and then we had a little one of those like instax cameras where you can take a picture automatically and have it printed through the camera on the table so they could take a photo and then tape it in to a journal that I had made and then they could write little notes to us so they were they were journaling with me at the wedding which was just a fun personal touch so this wet um the sign rather is from that from our wedding and so I thought <laughs> I had originally thought like, ooh, maybe I'd always use it at the beginning of journal with me's, but I haven't done that to date, and we've been married for more than two years, but I thought it would be fun to pull out for the journal with me live stream so that you all know you're in the right place. <laughs> Let me move some of these little bits out of frame. So yeah, tell me where you all are from. Tell me, um, you know, what time is it there? Is it morning for you? Is it evening? And then tell me what you're gonna be working on. Are you journaling with me? Or are you Bible journaling? Are you doing laundry? Um, whatever you're up to, I'd love to hear. So I'm just gonna flip through my July pages that I've done so far. As you can see, for some reason, every now and then when I'm in designing mode, I typically do all the design stuff first and then go back and do the journaling. But I haven't gone back and done the journaling yet on these pages for whatever reason, even though I've done the journaling on pages after them. So I'm a little out of sorts right now in my journaling. So I need to go back and fill in the fifth through the ninth with what actually happened in word form. But I have done then the 10th through the 13th on these pages here. So that means today I was planning on working on the 14th through the 16th with you guys. And I took some little notes, as you know, I tend to do on kind of what happened on those different days. We got some motorcycles joining with us. I don't know if you can hear those. Um, so let me first take a moment to say hi to everyone. Um, hi Jess from Just Plans and Writes. Hi Cindy from California. Um, Elf Daughter Crafts. Thank you for your encouragement with my technical difficulties. Um, Namsa from South Africa. That's such a beautiful name. Carissa from Iowa. And you're cleaning. So good luck with that. I have to clean after this is done. We have some major cleaning to catch up on in this household. And then we have um, Linda from Texas, Paula from Brazil, Jerry, um, who's new to this group. Welcome, Jerry. So, so good to see you all. Um, oh, it's 717 where you are, Cindy. So you're, you're bright and early right now. So yeah, it's always hard to find a time that works for most people, but I did put out a vote and it seemed like this was the one that everybody most wanted. There were a lot of votes for evening as well, but I'm actually going to my parents this evening for dinner. So um, that ended up actually not being an option like I thought it was going to be an option. <laughs> so let me flip to a blank page and start to talk this through a little bit. I'll try and bring you a little bit closer to if I can so that you can really see what's happening on the page. move the journal to so that it's in frame. So here is our blank slate that we're going to be working with. And these days, so Wednesday the 14th through Friday the 16th, which of course was yesterday, honestly weren't too, what's the word I'm looking for, eventful. <laughs> so I have a few little notes about, you know, on the 14th, I went and got mean cup coffee which is a local coffee shop near where i work 
that I picked up and just spent some time working there. And then we um, had our Bible study uh, group in the evening to watch The Chosen, which is just something we're doing in the summer while we're not currently going through a study. And then Thursday, I brought in donuts for our communications team. So I'm thinking the Thursday entry will have kind of a donut theme in some ways. And then Friday um, was a really chill work from home day, which was very nice. And I was able to spend a lot of time with Ben because he was working from home that day too. And I watched a movie called Saints and Soldiers and that is really what happened in my life over the last three days, not very eventful. But what I was thinking, because it's not super eventful, is that to kind of get my creativity going and really have more to do on the page, since this, what happened in these days isn't really giving me a whole ton of inspiration besides, you know, donuts and coffee. Um, what I was thinking is I might use some prompts and so from Meg Journals, she does something called Junk Journal July, if you're familiar with it. It's basically a hashtag that tons of journalers use in July, and there are different prompts for each day to basically encourage people to get into their junk journals or their creative journals, however they journal, uh, mostly junk journaling, which isn't really what I do, but Honestly, what is the definition of junk journaling? I don't even know. But <laughs> um, I thought it would be fun to use those prompts and kind of do my interpretation of a junk journal style while still, of course, uh, working with, you know, what happened on these days. Um, to me, junk journaling is often kind of more random. It's not necessarily about your day, but it might just be you know, making a really pretty entry to put a quote on or something like that. So that's what I'm thinking. So the prompts for Wednesday through Friday are monochrome for Wednesday, which basically means trying to use all shades of one color or black and white, but I think I'm going to go with all shades of a single color. Thursday is layered, which of course, you know, you can have a lot of fun with layering photos and stickers, so we'll see what we do with that. And then Friday is borders, so kind of working with the borders of your page. So that's what I'm going to be doing to help me get creative is to use those prompts. But you don't have to do that. Um, you're welcome to if you want, if you need a little inspiration as well. Um, but I would encourage you, if you're not familiar with Junk Journal July, to go check that out on Instagram and on YouTube. She has a YouTube channel, um, Meg Journals, so give her some love. Take a sip of my coffee. Um, yes, thank you, Jess, for answering Little Miss Creative's question about what journals I use. I do use Moleskin Cahiers journals, uh, which I finally have learned to say correctly, Cahiers, not Cahiers. <laughs> um, and these are the dot grid version, as you can tell, and this one is the extra large. So if you compare it to my hand, it is quite big. So these ones are really large pages, but I love having all this space to work in. It's so much fun. And whenever I have a day where I'm like, there's no way I can fill this entire page with the events of my day, I break it up into multiple days. And so you're basically just creating smaller pages. And that way, too, you get more use out of the journal as well. So here you can see I have three days on one page and just like to play around with that as well. And of course, three here as well. Hi, Lori. Happy to catch the live stream at this nice early time. Yes, in the Northwest. Yeah, you guys are probably really enjoying staying inside as I am uh, with the heat wave we're having. The struggle with this journaling is I have very loud AC units in my apartment, so I have to turn them off when I'm filming. So I tried to blast cold air like crazy this morning before hopping on here to film, but it's already heating up a little bit. <laughs> so we'll see how long I last. Um, that might be how I decide when I'm done doing the live stream is just whether I can handle the heat any longer. <laughs> Um, 
Oh, I'm so glad you're here for inspiration, Linda. Um, yeah, journal slumps uh, happen to us all, but definitely hopping on live streams and being in the community is a great way to be inspired. But you're not going to get inspired by this blank page, are you? So I guess I should probably get started. So like I said, I'm going to work with a monochrome theme for Wednesday and I think I am gonna just work on like the whole page rather than split it up so what I'm thinking because I th I think I'm gonna center this day kind of around the whole getting coffee in the morning thing because that was a nice little treat for myself to start my work day at a coffee shop I think I'm gonna go with different shades of like browns and neutrals so with that in mind, I do have like a stack of like bags and papers. So I'm going to grab those. <laughs> Here's my stack. <laughs> See if we can put that into frame. These can also be really fun for layering, I think. I have so many things, and like all of this stuff I haven't looked at in so long, I don't even know what's here, because I don't play with paper as frequently in my journaling, but I thought it would be fun to do for this entry. So what I'm looking for, and this is the nice thing about prompts, is it really helps you to focus what you're doing. So if I tell myself, okay, I'm doing a monochrome page and I'm going to do it in shades of brown and neutrals like tans, then that means I can ignore anything that isn't in that color palette. So I'm going to just focus on looking for browns. For example, I really like the look of this. And this kind of has some nice brown shades to it as well. I think I'm going to go and cut out this map. This like I said, I'm going to have fun, I think, with kind of some junk journal vibes for these entries. Isn't this paper so beautiful? I love this piece of paper. And I got it on sale. 45 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you that you see nothing wrong with my stack. <laughs> so we have this little piece. I'm just going to stick these um, to the side as I pick them out. This thing that I have that I got on clearance, as you can see there, originally was $10. I got it for $3.49, is a mixed media collage pad from Recollections. And this is really fun because it has like... I have all kinds of stuff shoved into this too, so it's not just the mixed media, but this pad is really a mix of different textures. So this is like full on fabric that is added into here, which is cool. And then we have, of course, lots of different papers, very vintage vibes with this one. So here's some brown. So this is kind of fun, this paper here, because you could, now I would have to do really tiny journaling to fit it on that, but that could be an option. And then see at the back, sorry, it keeps like flying into the camera. Uh, you can see like this has a really cool texture. That would be very, very thick though in my journal, so I'm not sure I want to do that. And then this has a really cool I love this because this this reminds me of like coffee bags you know what I mean like those like big coffee sacks I guess you would call them I don't know but this I I think we're gonna play with this so I'm gonna cut this little piece of this out I don't think I need a huge piece but we're gonna cut a little bit. Um, and while I'm cutting this, Lori, I see that you have a question about, do I often take brief notes for the day and then journal later? That does tend to be 
kind of my process. Sometimes I'm like really on it and journaling for that day or just the day after and then don't really need to take notes. But there are often times where I'm doing kind of what I call catch up journaling, like I'm doing today, where I'll just keep little notes of what happened during the days and then I'll go back to it um, and do the creative part and the journaling later. So that's not always the case, but I would say generally, I just find it easier in terms of making the time to take little notes throughout the day. Um, in this case, I sat down just this morning and went back through basically my calendar entries, my text messages, my photos to piece together uh, beyond just my memory and recollection what happened on these days. So that's a really good tip as well when you're trying to recall what happened is to use all of those resources in your life that you don't really realize are actually keeping your memories for you, like your photos in your phone, your text messages, like I said, all those sorts of things. My work calendar entries often jog my memory. Um, if you keep a planner, that can be really helpful too. So all those kinds of things can be helpful. And then because of that, I can kind of just sit down on a weekend when I have the time and play in my journal and just do a bunch of entries at once. I like the look of this bag. So I'm gonna, these are my pieces so far that are kind of in that color palette we were talking about. And then this is like an old book that I've kept because book pages can be really fun to use um, for junk journaling and creative journaling as well. I think in this case, I have some that are already cut out that are like old dictionary pages. So I might just kind of rip apart some of these. Sometimes what I really love to do is find words that connect to what I'm doing when I'm using dictionary pages. So for example, if I was doing an autumn entry, which of course we're not because we're in the summer, um, but I might use the autumn, you know, dictionary entry here and cut that out to play with. Um, yes, I do follow Helen Colebrook from Journal With Purpose, and yeah, her work is amazing too. Another great person to follow and get inspired by. Oh, ooh, maybe what I'll do, friends, um, it's because I've been kind of working on writing. I could cut out this author piece down here and stick that in. And actually that does fit because I didn't put this in my notes, but that actually just jogged my memory um, that I had a bunch of my books come in um, from an old, basically where I work did like a, an event and had a, some leftover books um, from that I had written from that event. And they asked if I wanted them and I was like, yeah, I want them. What else are you going to do with them? Throw them away. Um, please don't do that. <laughs> so, uh, they gave me a bunch of my, of my books that they had bought. Um, which is good because I actually don't have as many copies of my books as I should. So cut that out. That's a fun little piece. So these are all the brown pieces that we have that we're going to work with so far. And then I have this too, which kind of, I mean this, if I use this, it's kind of getting a little bit away from the monochrome. Um, but I feel like these colors look really nice together. So I don't know, we might play with that too. And if we do, so I'm gonna break my rules of the monochrome because here's the thing about journal prompts. They're meant to inspire you. They're not meant to lock you in. That's really important. So just because a journal prompt you used to get inspired told you to do everything monochrome doesn't mean if you get inspired to add another color that you shouldn't do that because you're breaking the rules of that prompt. I think that's 
silly. So I'm going to cut out this green and we're going to add in a little bit of pops of green to this entry. And the reason I'm cutting this piece out is because it has uh, France on it. And I've been listening to an audiobook set in France during World War II. It's called The Alice Network. Really, really good book if you haven't read it. Highly recommend it. But that's been kind of my, my listen for my commutes. So I think that would be a really fun piece to include. All right, so these are all of my pieces I think we're gonna play with. Um, these are not my prompts, so that's important to um, distinguish, sorry. Uh, these prompts are from Meg Journals, and she is doing a, I don't know what you call it, uh, basically a community collaboration called Junk Journal July, where she's encouraging everybody to follow along and get into their journals and use specific prompts. Um, so that's what I'm using to get inspired today. Um, for this entry, the prompt was monochrome, but... I am breaking the rules, the rules in quotes, of the prompt a little bit um, by bringing in some green as well to kind of, because this has like a, a slight tint of green in it that I think helps me to branch out a little bit more. So we're going to just start playing with these items. I'm going to clear off my desk a little bit because it's getting a bit crazy with all these pieces. And before my coffee gets cold, I'm going to take a sip of that. Yeah, definitely look for Junk Journal July. You can find it on YouTube and on Instagram are the main places where people are participating. The coffee is super good. I highly recommend it. Um... If you're interested in Beanbox at all, this is, they don't sponsor me or do anything <laughs> for me whatsoever. Um, but I do have a code from just being somebody who uses their product um, in my description box for $5 off if that interests you. So just thought I'd mention that. So we're just going to do some ripping, I think. fun thing. I don't even know what this is a map of. Oh, it's very tiny and difficult to read. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, West Passage, Northwest Passage. Something I'm working on in my own journaling process is trying to get out of the mindset that everything on the page has to have something to do with that day. So I'm definitely pretty straightforward sometimes in my thinking when it comes to that, that I really want, you know, this is on the page because this happened on this day and this is on the page because this happened on that day and et cetera, et cetera, rather than just saying, I put this on the page because it was pretty and I liked the way it looked. So that's something I'm trying to work on. So even though a map technically doesn't really have anything to do with the day that I'm documenting, that doesn't mean I can't use it. Um, so that's what I'm trying to work on is just being more free in my mindset of what can work on the page. Ooh, look at the back of this. I didn't even realize it. Look at that with the green matches so nicely. So we're going to just do like a nice ripped edge. I really like the way that the white comes through then. So maybe we'll tuck that in there.
And then I'm thinking this is where I'm gonna probably need like, maybe I'll do like a big date or something since I obviously can't journal over this because of the texture. Um, but what I might do is like choose to journal down the side here or I could journal in some blank space if I have it. But feeling good about this so far. I also got this card that I wanna use at some point. Um, I got a little promotion in my job so my aunt sent this to me which was very nice and it's so beautiful and like just an awesome texture but I feel like I want this to be a tip in at some point somewhere and while it has the green in it it's a little bit too much like too many different additions to the green if that makes sense so So I'm glad you guys have more of a mindset of just, I put this here because I liked it. Um, like I said, something I too am trying to embody. Let's take this piece off. I might use it somewhere else, we'll see. Whenever I'm layering, it's kind of just a process of moving things around the page and seeing what I like, what makes sense. Kind of want to cover up that rip at some point. We'll see. I don't know. What do you guys think? I can't decide if I like this kind of added on to the top of the really textured bag piece or if I like it better kind of down here yes this would be a beautiful journaling spot um so definitely have that in mind but maybe maybe for our layering page we'll use that we'll see I think I'm going to start just trying to glue some stuff down because otherwise I could stare at the page all day and never put anything actually down on it. So that's what we're gonna do. Get out my handy dandy tape runner and we're just gonna start sticking stuff down and then I can always build upon it from there. Hi Justin, good morning. You like the words layered onto the brown fabric? Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Now let's see how taping this works. I always try to tape things down first, it doesn't always work. Um, because I hate getting out glue. I just, I don't know what it is about glue that is not my friend, but I'm never a fan of using glue. Let's see, will it work? Kind of, as long as I don't like pull it. Uh-oh, I think we might be running out. Oh no. Or I just broke it. <laughs> I either broke it or we're running out of tape. Hmm. I think, I think I fixed it. I had to tighten it. So I could obviously very easily pull it up, but I feel like it sticks well enough that as long as nobody's trying to pull it, it'll be fine. So, we have our little author piece. Oh, I had meant for this to go under here, so I think we can still do that. I'm gonna tuck it, tuck it in there. And then sometimes with pieces like this, I purposefully don't glue down every bit of it because I actually want 
this to feel a little bit more loose because um, it just that too can add a little bit more texture. See what I mean? Like just let this be loose and I can even like push it up a little bit. And I want to bring a little bit of that green to match down here as well. I feel like my, my stickers back here are adding weird shadows onto the top of the page. There we go. It's tape, right? Um, yes, this is my Mega Zyron runner, so it is tape. Um, yeah, I might need to break out some glue because <laughs> it does lift up pretty easily. <laughs> so let's put this down and then maybe we'll get some glue. Let me know in the comments, what are your guys' preferred um, adhesive methods. Are you guys tape runners? Are you glue dots? Are you straight like glue stick? I feel like everybody kind of has their go-to. And this, really the way that this is working out could easily be for the layered prompt as well. And then I had this paper that I wanted to use, which this, friends, is just an old bag from a jewelry store, obviously. So just something, you know, when I purchased something, it came in this bag and I held on to it because I journaled. So of course I did, right? Because that's what we journalers do. We hoard stuff. But I'm feeling like this rose would be a really pretty addition. Mm. And then of course we don't want jewelry on it. So we'll cut that out. Glue sticks, wish I used tape runners more. Yeah, glue sticks do, I do whenever I watch people often see them using glue sticks. I don't know what it is, I guess. That's probably because I started out when I was younger, scrapbooking with my mom is kind of how I got started in memory keeping. So, Tape runners are often used in scrapbooking, so I think that just kind of became the norm for me. I don't want to cover up this because I kind of like the, the texture that that adds. So I kind of like that. Before I do that, I might want to use some glue. Hmm, very interesting to see what you guys all use. I can't believe I didn't use this sooner. I love the look of this on the page, really cool. Let me see if I can find my glue, since like I said, I hardly ever use it. I have to stand up. Um, so I have 
this glue. I also have some glue dots. I don't know if they would work. So we might go with this glue pen. I thought I had a mixed media glue somewhere, but I don't know where that is, so. We will see how this works. Oh gosh. Came out pretty intensely. So I'll just do this around the edges make sure we really have it down. What kind of look are you going for in your journal? Do you start out with doing so in the beginning or do you just wing it and improvise along the way? Um, I feel like I'm a wing it <laughs> kind of person in many ways. Um, I kind of figure out what the page is going to look like along the way. I don't have, I don't like set up like a layout ahead of time and say, this is going to go here and this is going to go here always perfectly. Um, sometimes I do that if I have like a very clear vision of what I want to do, but I feel like I kind of like to see how it evolves as I play with different items. Usually though, I do like we did at the beginning, um, kind of just get all of the pieces that I think I might want to use on that entry out and then I just play around with arranging them on the page until I figure out a layout that I like. I like that. This is making me want a junk journal, friends. <laughs> I'm really liking this freedom of just making something look however I want it to, rather than, you know, feeling boxed in by what happened on that day. In some ways, I'm still, you know, making it related to what happened on that day, but a lot of this is just what looks pretty to me. No, I guess... Did this work? Keeping it? I feel like it did for that one, but for some reason this feels like it would benefit from glue. Though I am worried that it's gonna... Oh no. I think the piece attached to the lid, <laughs> it like, came off. It's in there. Um, so I'm not gonna play with that side right now and figure that out. I'm afraid I don't... Oh no! Oh no! So hold on. I'll answer your question in a minute. I'm having a glue crisis over here, which is why I hate glue. Oh goodness. <laughs> it's getting everywhere. Um, yeah, I unfortunately don't know where I got the glue, or not the glue. See, I'm, I'm just in the glue mindset right now. <laughs> um, I'm not sure where I got the jewelry bag from, I agree, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, it might have been when I got my engagement ring um, resized and um, it was originally a fire opal, but I quickly realized that fire opals are a bit too much for me. Oh my goodness, look, Meg Journals has joined us. I feel like a star has arrived. <laughs> um, that's so awesome. Hi, Meg. We're junk journaling. I'm you, Meg. <laughs> you have inspired us. So I'm currently working in some ways with your monochrome theme because I'm working on the, what day is this? The 14th. But I did, I did break the rules a little bit and bring in a little bit of green to my, my neutral browns. Yes, wild runaway glue. I know. I really see this is why I don't like glue. Maybe maybe if I had like just a normal 
glue stick that isn't like liquid, maybe I wouldn't mind it as much, but I always think of glue sticks like that as not working super well because I think I associate them with like kindergarten. <laughs> All right. Fun, friends. I'm liking it. My hands are all sticky now because of the glue. Like, mm, I don't get it, guys. I don't get your, your enjoyment with the glue. <laughs> all right. I feel like I want to... Actually, you know what I want to do? because of the roses here, I want to stamp something here. Because I have these fun stamps that I think would look really nice there. Yeah, these ones. Um, so I'm thinking these flowers might look really nice. And I don't know where I got these either, so sorry, friends. If I was better at this I would know exactly what I was going to use where I got it and have all the links down below for you but I'm afraid I don't know where I got these I think actually that's because these were gifted to me by my mom so I want to use this flower Yeah, peeling the glue off your hands. Um, and I'm going to do black um, instead of, since we have the black hints here, rather than sticking with the monochrome of the brown. So in some ways, I feel like we're more so doing the prompt of layered, <laughs> just on the wrong day, but that's okay. that nice and stampy all inked up and then I'm gonna do it onto this too and just see how it turns out oh no didn't work as well as I was hoping Maybe, let's see if I can ink that part up again. And then I might be able to lift this away and like do it underneath. Hmm. I have to move this up onto the block. Okay. Yeah, we should be able to do it. See if we can line it up. There we go. A little better. Not perfect. But that's okay. We might put a sticker or something over that to help. See if I can stop my dog from barking. <laughs> She's getting ready. She heard a mail truck or something outside. It is a really pretty stamp. Unfortunately, I did not stamp it super well, so we're not getting the full effect of it, but that's okay. These things happen. Um, I did get a little bit of stamp here on the page, and I think, let's see if we can just cover that up. This is my go-to fix when I get something where I don't want it to be. There goes the dog, I told you. Down, Jean. Down. Lay down. No, you can lay down. <laughs> oh, I know. It's okay. It's okay. They're allowed to be outside. I know. Uh, but yeah, so this is my go-to fix. Is just to bring out the white gel pen and cover it up. 
and the ones that I recommend all the time are from Arteza. These to me are the best white gel pens ever. Highly, highly recommend them. All right, we need to get the date on here somewhere. I wonder, because that did kind of work. I don't know if I have, um, maybe I'll use stencil and try and do the date on here. Let's see. What date is this again? I keep forgetting. <laughs> the 14th. Okay, so I have my number stencils here. Um, these ones are linked in my Amazon shop, assuming they are still in stock, because you never know with Amazon, do you? Um, but hopefully they're there. So let's see. Maybe I'll try using this Faber-Castell brush pen, maybe. See how it works. to be working pretty well. Yes, the Arteza white gel pen is life-changing. <laughs> I've tried all the jelly rolls. I've tried the Uniball Signo white gel pens. And the Arteza pen, I think, blows them out of the water. Ooh, we like it. That looks cool. Ooh, I'm loving this. Okay, let's do the one. Now, just so we're clear, I don't use this pen like ever really, which is why I'm okay using it over this texture. If you were actually using this as a brush pen for like calligraphy uh, and brush lettering, I would not recommend doing this. I would just break out a regular normal Sharpie, um, but I actually don't have any Sharpies or anything like that. So that's why I'm using it for all of you who are like, oh my gosh, you're damaging your pen. <laughs> I know, it's okay. Um, have I been journaling for a long time? And if so, how long and what made you start in the first place? I have been. I would say that I started memory keeping um, when I was much younger because my mom, like I said, was into scrapbooking. Um, so I kind of made like very, very sad, 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 sad early 2000s scrapbooks before like this really I think boomed and became a thing paper crafting and then I would say right after college I wanted to get back into memory keeping but I felt like scrapbooking was just too onerous for me it just felt like a lot of time and effort and everybody I knew who scrapbooked were like 50-year-old women, I'm not shaming 50-year-old women, that's like my crowd, honestly, um, but they all were like working on baby photos and had kids my age, right? So it just seemed like people who scrapbooked were like consistently so behind, whereas with journaling, like I may be a few days behind, but I'm never, you know, 10 years behind. Um, so I kind of liked the idea of doing more of a like daily journaling, but still creative, still bringing in those scrapbooking elements and memory keeping and photos. But it just feels like a lot less pressure when you're just dealing with a journal. And so I actually started out bullet journaling. If you go back in my videos, that was what most of my videos were, um, were bullet journaling and kind of like more planner based. And then I kind of just was like, I like setting the pages up, but I don't actually really use them as a planner. I find it a lot easier to just use a normal, weekly planner um just that i fill in and then use the creative bits in the memory keeping journaling style so that's kind of how i got started but i've definitely been doing it for a while and i do want to at some point make a video of like a look back at all my journals and how i've progressed in my style and just techniques and the things that i use because 
I think it is really helpful for beginners to see that because my journals did not look like this <laughs> five years ago. Um, you know, it takes time and you really have to learn your own style and, you know, experiment. So that was a little chatty break. Um, back to the page. I think I just need to write July here. And then I'm going to do my journaling down here, I think. And then I do kind of want to maybe find a sticker or something to build this part up a little bit just because it got a little messed up and it bothers me. <laughs> um, what do you guys think? Should I stamp July here or do stenciling or just do hand lettering here? So I could use the same stencils or I could stamp it. I don't really want to stamp it, I don't think, because it might show through. Um, so hand lettering or stenciling, what do you guys think? Tuesday, this is Wednesday. So while you guys are thinking about that, I'm gonna hand letter Wednesday here. Hand lettering. Oh, okay. So we'll hand letter July here, and then I'm gonna hand letter Wednesday down here. I go into concentration mode when I'm hand lettering, so be a little quiet. There you go, Wednesday. Nice juxtaposition. Yes, good word. <laughs> All right, so we'll do... I want it to be nice and big. There we go, July. This, you got a little messed up because there's, I think, a die cut on the other side. So I might just actually go over all the down strokes and just make them a little bit thicker, especially since this is such a big hand lettered piece. I just threw the cap. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, like I said, I do want to just put something here and then this page might be done. I don't know. I'm always that person who struggles to know when to stop, so. I feel like I need, this one is a good, um, kind of vintage-y uh, feel to these stickers. This is the Jen Hadfield homemade sticker book from American Crafts. So I like, like this hello sticker could be pretty. Um, and this also has some greens that actually match pretty well the greens that we had been working with. Adventure. 
speak truth. Kind of like that. For here, maybe. You know, like speak truth, write truth kind of thing. Maybe I need to layer it, though. I don't know if I want to do this, but let's see. Does this not stand out enough if I put this on here? What if we did that? And maybe what I'll do is outline. I kind of like it. Actually, what I might do, instead of outlining it, that down is use a baby wipe and just kind of do like a, a background with the same ink that we used for the stamping. So I have some baby wipes here. They're a little bit dry, but it'll work. So I have to tell you guys, I have been in such a creative rut lately, I feel, with my journaling. Like, just every page I've created lately has not felt, I don't know, just not super inspired or, yeah, I don't know. I just haven't been, <laughs> been happy with what I've been creating as much. But this has been so fun because I feel like I'm really getting into, like, my element. A little bit down here. Okay. There we go. I like that, guys. And especially to speak truth, it's like it's coming out of his mouth. And then layered on top of the author. Very cool. Alright, I think I'm converted into a junk journaler. <laughs> I've been converted. <laughs> I really like that. Like this, this little corner of this page is just giving me all the happy vibes. And then maybe sticker might work well. Let's see. What do you think about that sticker there to just tie it all together? I kind of like the gold because it sort of plays off of the, the brown tones in some ways. So I'm going to do that. All right. I think, friends, that is going to be the finished entry for July 14th. And then, of course, I'm going to do my journaling um, right here in this little space. But I'm very happy with the way that this turned out. So I'll give you guys some nice close-ups so you can, like, really appreciate the textures. So we did our little hand lettering, our little front piece. And then, like, isn't the texture of this so pretty? I just love that. And I really love the look of the stenciling over it. And then our favorite little corner. Looks so nice. And definitely, always a good tip if you're trying to layer, like, really busy pattern on top of each other, is to just do some kind of backing. So whether that's using um, some ink, like I did, to just help it almost have a shadowing effect and also gives it dimension because of that shadowing effect um, or you could just outline it with a pen to make it pop a little bit more and then we have our stamping with the sticker over it on this side so just helps to cover up the part where the stamping got a little bit messed up and then adds some extra layering as well 
so that is my monochrome slash kind of layered <laughs> entry. And then where are my notes? I think I have time to do one more with you guys. So if you want to stick around and do one more together, I would love to have you. Um, and of course, I'll also have the recording continue to stay up here. So that's no problem either if you need to head out and watch it later. Um, can you hear the things that I'm like breaking out of frame <laughs> as I'm dropping things all over the place? I'm looking for my notes. Where did I put them? Can anybody see them? I also have a habit of not cleaning up items as I go, especially when I'm doing live because I don't want to waste your time with me just, oops, sorry, I bounced it, um, with me just trying to clean. So I often don't clean, <laughs> but I really should because, you know, it's important <laughs> to be able to think straight and get everything right and find your notes, which I just did by cleaning a little bit. So oh, here we go. Where are my notes? And I do have a tendency when pages are next to each other like this to want them to look cohesive as a unit. So I might bring in some similar elements to what I used over here. We'll see. Like I have this piece of twine um, that came off of this fabric piece that I might use. This could be a fun, like a pocket or something with a journaling card in it. That may be an idea, but then I could punch a hole in and tie that around. So this is the page that I said had to do with donuts, <laughs> if you remember from the beginning. Um, so it doesn't mean that I have to put donuts on the page, but I do, I think, have some items that have donuts on them that I've been like, Ugh, I'm never going to have an opportunity to use these because I don't personally really like donuts. But here it is. There is one of the journaling cards I've been like holding on to for the day that I might actually have something to talk about related to donuts. And here we are. So I might use this. And actually, friends, you know what's cool about this? If you look really closely at this, these sprinkles, it's probably hard for you to tell, but these sprinkles are like the exact same green that we used over in this side. So we might just be adding another color with this pink over here, but still I think it's gonna keep it cohesive, which is really fun. And then this is the page, the day of the week that is supposed to be layered. Um, so we've already played with layering a lot, but we're gonna do I think some more layering over here. Thank you guys. I'm glad you guys liked the first page we did. And yes, the baby wipe is one of my favorite techniques. This one is very dry. Um, so I recommend using ones that are not, <laughs> that are a little bit more wet. Um, but baby wipes are one of my favorite things to use with stamp ink, with gelatos, Faber-Castell gelatos. Um, just to give background effects. I love doing them through a stencil. That's actually what I did. Uh, where is it? Let me find it. Nope. Um, on this page here. Um, so this effect here is stamp ink and gelatos with a baby wipe just through a patterned stencil. So there's an idea for you. And then... This isn't going to match. I had this um, bean box card thing that came, obviously, in the box. And I thought this was so pretty. So I'm definitely going to hang on to this piece and use it at some point. But it doesn't really work um, for the color palette we're going for on this page. So that's okay. okay. Do I want to use this for the layering? It does look nice, doesn't it, with, with this page over here, but I don't know that it looks good with donuts. <laughs> so I'm going to hold my, hold my thoughts on that one for a moment.
I think what I might do is take this same bag that we used over here and then see how I still have this corner of it intact. The nice thing about bags is that when you have the corners still intact, is it makes it really easy to turn this into a pocket because you only have to really close up the one side. So I think that's what we're going to do. And I'm gonna use, where is it? My trimmer to cut it so that we get a nice even And then, let's see what size I, oh, that's perfect. I guess I should have measured it, but it worked out perfectly anyways. Um, and then figure out what size I want the pocket to be. I want it to stick out a little bit. So, let's see how that works. So now I have, see this piece, got the corner still perfectly intact. And then I can stick our little donut card in there. And then, like I said, I'll prop. Now, I don't even have to. I mean, it's not a big deal if I just left that unclosed because it still holds it quite well. Um, but I might close that up. Some washi tape or something. I actually have... So this washi tape will match this side really well. And I have then this pink, which might pull out the pink of the, the donuts. And this washi tape that has writing on it that will look nice, I think, because of the writing pieces over on the side. And then I also have like this vintage -y girls tape that could be fun to keep with our vintage vibes we've got going so I might play with those I should have put my hair up oh I have a hair tie right here excuse me while I put my hair up as this room continues to heat up and start to boil <laughs> okay should have made an iced coffee this morning So how um, are your journaling endeavors going right now, fam? How many pages have you done so far? You probably have done many more than I have because I'm yapping the whole time. And this one, actually, I wonder, I think I'm going to do it like that. And then I'll write the, the date or something up here. Let me find my little hole punch thing. Here it is, I have a little baby hole puncher. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Try and make it in the middle as much as possible. Oops. Hi, Millie. Yeah, if you've jumped on since we've done intros at the beginning, feel free to say hi. Um, I think because this piece is pretty small, I'm going, so there's kind of different ways that you can attach, right, a string to your, your card when you do this kind of thing. One way is just to do that, you know, push it through and then tie a nice little knot or make a bow, but I don't think this is quite long enough to make a bow. I could if I really wanted to finesse it. But another way is to pinch your two ends together, push them through. And then through your little loop that you have in the back, bring them, those two ends, through the loop in the back, and then just pull, and then it 
tightens it like you see there. And so that's just like a really easy way to attach it. So that's going to be our little pocket. I think I like, I might like this side better because I like the texture of the, the piece like folded up and over. And then I'm going to close it with this tape and we're just gonna kind of decorate I think the little pocket now our pocket is closed on the three sides and we only had to close the one side right because these ones were kind of built in because of the bag so now we have a little pocket and that's where our card is going to go we can have a little bit more fun with this pocket I think Do some layering. This girl has the perfect colored dress on. I kind of like, so um, see how the, the feet here from like last time I ripped it? I would probably normally just cut that off, but I kind of like the look of it like peeking out <laughs> from under this piece of washi tape. I don't know why that seems kind of cool to me. nicely we can rip this. And then, I don't know, this might be weird. I'm feeling some, um, James, what's his name? James Burke. Um, vibes right now of like the way he like plays with like girl silhouettes and um kind of like I don't know how to explain it he like pieces together like and does bodies like in different ways so like see how if I put her under there and it's like her feet are popping out down here and then her head's up there I don't know I don't know why I think that's kind of a fun mixed media thing to do I have to plug in my iPad because it just died and I can't see your comments while it's dead so hopefully that'll pop up back on soon okay but I like I kind of like the way that that's looking um I wonder, I have this food sticker book, and I know that there's like a ton of donut stickers in here somewhere, which again, when the heck am I going to use these donut stickers? I don't know. There they are. Look at them all. So many donuts. Oh, look, you can't buy don't happiness, but you can buy donuts, and that's kind of the same thing. I don't personally feel that way. If you said that about books, if you said that about journaling supplies, if you said that about bubble tea, <laughs> um, I would feel that way, but I don't really feel that way about donuts, but when else am I going to get to use that sticker? So even though it's not happiness for me, I bought happiness for my coworkers. So I think we're going to stick that. On here somewhere. So 
Sorry, I'm trying to figure out my iPad situation so I can see any comments. Oh no. I don't know what I just knocked over, but that's okay. So, now I'm gonna try and stick with the brown donuts for obvious reasons. That at the bottom, fold that over. I don't know if this needs another donut or not. <laughs> Decisions. envelope. Here's our little card. So we're going to stick in there. This is stuck here for some reason. There we go. So the question is what to do next? Um, one option is to do maybe like stamping in the background around it. I could see that. And then maybe my journaling would go up here. Um, cause this card I think is just going to be the date because you can't really do journaling on this. There's not enough room. So let me first um, actually instead of journaling it or hand lettering it rather. I think I'm gonna use my fun little library date stamp that I actually stole from my old job. That's a confession. Um, Cause I knew nobody used it cause it's like an antiquated, right? It's not like anybody is using this to sign, um, you know, envelopes or anything like that anymore, but I knew that I would have fun with it in my journal. So when I left that job, I was like, I'm taking this with me because nobody else is going to use it. It's been in this desk for countless years with nobody touching it. And I am going to give it a new life. <laughs> so what day am I trying to put here? Um, 1-15, which fun fact, July 15th is the day that my husband proposed in 2018. So it's a special date for me. Good memories. Um, okay. So I think we have it right. I'm always a little concerned when setting dates on things like this that I have it backwards or something. Uh, but I think we have it, 7-15-21. Definitely got stamp in other places, but it might look cool. Or the ink, rather. When it does that. Ooh! That, sorry, I hit you. <laughs> I got a little um, crazy with my flourish there of picking the, the stamp up. That looks really good, though. That actually stamped super cleanly. I don't use this enough in my journaling. I love this thing. I need to use it more. Um, I do want to give it a little bit more of a vintage feel, though. So I think I'm, I'm going to do the same thing that we did over here around the head, but I'm going to do it with 
the this ink which is versifying toffee and it has more of these brown toffee colors um kind of hued to it so i think this one will be really pretty to use in that way and then let me just move some stuff out of the way i'm gonna not do this over my journal page because i don't want to get it on journal page. I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap paper. Hmm. <laughs> I need a good piece of scrap paper. Here, I'll just use the back of this sticker paper here. So I'm going to take my little toffee ink and just like rub it around the sides. And then I think I actually am going to do a little bit of the black too, but like really try and keep the black just to the edges, if that makes sense. See what I mean? Just like really keeping it on the edges. And I'll do that one all the way around. just has a little bit more of a antiqued look to it. So I'm just looking at your comments. Um, that's awesome you worked on your mom's birthday card. Wow, you handmade the paper? That's amazing. I'm so impressed. I've never handmade paper. That would be a really fun um, activity to do, to use your own paper journal. All right, so now that we've done that, we can bring this back onto the page. There are our favorite friends, the motorcycles again. There we go. Nice, so I like that. Some good, some good layering fun. And then I think I'm going to bring back some of these stamps and do them around the bottom and then my journaling I think I'm going to just do up here my hands are a little dirty but that's okay so we're just going to layer I'm going to move our little tag out of the way Grab our stamp. Keep off the edge if we get the ink where we don't want it to be. And then my thought is to just kind of put this around. You know what would make this a lot easier is, so here's a, a good tip. Um, draw, so if you're trying to stamp like a border around something, just draw a little outline of that thing. So in this case, we have our, our card. So we can tell what's gonna be peeking out and what's gonna be behind our journaling card and this also then kind of tells us where we want it to end so I really want the flowers to be around the bottom of it here so I just did a little outline of it and now I know exactly you know what's gonna show through and what's gonna be under the card that I don't need to worry about See, that 
that is how the stamp is supposed to look um, when you're not trying to do it over a ton of layers. It's really, really a beautiful stamp. And I'm just gonna layer these since we are doing a layering page after all. We're just creating a little border. And then this is gonna sit in the middle of it. I really like that. I think I might Maybe do want like actually wrap it all the way around and have it sit there. So I'm gonna do two more of these. Good morning. Sweet Drops. That's a fun username. Okay, so that would be a beautiful page in itself to just do a little stamp border and then you could put like your journaling in here and the date up here. That would be really pretty to do. But we are going to stick this here. And that's gonna be like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tape this down, I think. I don't think there's anything else I wanna do. I don't wanna, in terms of um, layering with the flowers, so I think we're safe to go ahead and tape this down if we can find our tape runner. Hmm. Where did I put it? Oh, I found it. <laughs> okay. Oh gosh. Oh, I got nervous. I thought maybe I was smearing the stamp underneath of it. Let's put this over here. <laughs> careful fun 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 okay and then tape it down nice look at that Trying to name your journal and you're looking for suggestions. It's blue and has birds. Ooh, that's fun. Um, trying to think of blue birds, like blue jays. You can name her the journal Stellar, like Stellar Blue Jay, um, which is a really beautiful bird. If you're not familiar with it, you should look it up. All right. Is the page done or does it need something more? I did get a little stamp over here. I think I'm gonna turn this into a, like a leaf over the stamp mark, which 
it won't be super noticeable. Um, be a very light detail. Like you guys probably can't even see what I'm doing, <laughs> but you actually can see the gel pen on the page because it's more of a cream than a white. here too. Um, that's a good question. Did the flower stamp bleed through? It did a little bit. Um, so it's a little bit of bleed through, a little bit of uh, shadowing, but my philosophy with this kind of stuff is I'll worry about that when I come to that page. Um, so this just means that I'm either going to have to use it to my advantage, like maybe take pen and like trace the flowers to make it part of this page as well, or I'll just put paper over it, cover it up. Um, it doesn't bother me, um, especially like a little bit of bleed through or shadowing. Like you can see here, there's some shadowing from the words on the other side. That often doesn't bother me because once you do something with that next page, you don't even really notice it. But if there's major bleed through or something, I just try and be strategic about covering it up with paper in my next design. Um, the only time that you really need to be mindful of that is if you, you know, worked ahead in your journal and already have something. Like if I had already done journaling on this page, and then was working on this page, I would want to be more mindful of what I'm putting on this so that it wouldn't bleed through and potentially ruin this page. But in a case where I don't yet have a design plan for the next page, that just means I'll just work with the way that the page turns out, if that makes sense. That matches the vibe. Nice. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm debating if I want to just do my journaling here and be done with this one. Does it feel like enough layering? I feel like I did more layering over here than I did over here, but maybe that's okay. I was debating about... Let's just see how this looks. I don't know. I think I like that actually. Kind of making it like melt into the page rather than just like sitting on top of it. If that makes sense. <laughs> And then I think I'm gonna outline these little leaves that I did. I might do a, a few more too. Got some of the white gel pen because I didn't let it dry on the tip of the Fudanusuki. So it's actually making it um, like a little scratchy looking, which actually works pretty well <laughs> for the vibes that I'm, I'm going for right now. So it doesn't actually bother me too much.
it's good night Faye journal thanks for joining us isn't it so crazy that some people are currently getting ready for bed and others are just starting their day time zones are a crazy thing I just want to write Thursday somewhere. I'm debating if I want to just like put it here or if I want to maybe use um, black stickers, which alpha stickers, which I think I have somewhere. Maybe. these ones, but they're rather large. <laughs> this random at the lake sticker stuck to it. I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> oh goodness. I'm just going to leave that there for now. Um, but I'm thinking maybe of just putting TH for Thursday rather than spelling the whole thing out. We're just writing Thurs. Um, Like one more, one more layering detail, you know? So, thinking I want it here. And then we might need one more donut. <laughs> um, I do love my moleskin journals. They've served me well. It's just what I've always kind of used. Um, not always. I've tried other kinds, but that's the one I always go back to. I just, I like the paper quality. It's not perfect in terms of bleed through and stuff, but I think it's the, a good balance of like thin enough that you actually don't, I feel, bulk up too much. But also, I would argue that it's, um, you know, thick enough that f for the most part, you don't struggle with too crazy of bleed through. should have that might have been cute oh well all right I think we're done with this entry I'm gonna put that sticker back and call this one done I think so like I said I'm gonna do my journaling up here um I wonder if I should <laughs> here I am saying oh I, the page is done and then I'm like should I bring something else in and say should I put something like here to do my journaling over actually we're gonna do that just kidding we're not done um I I want this on the page so I'm going to just put a little bend in it and that's gonna be then my guide for where to cut it so that's a little tip for you as well
then I can just come in here and cut. And then this will give us a little bit more of the layering since that is our prompt after all for the 15th is layering. And then I have my little corner rounder since these pages are rounded corners and obviously this was a straight corner. I can just snip that off to make it rounded. And then to tie it together, we can add a little bit more layering. I think I want this to be a little bit more ripped. I have an, a ripped edge. like I froze. Sorry y'all, I froze for a second there. Um, sorry. <laughs> so my my phone is telling me that it's getting close to dying because I don't have it plugged in because I couldn't find my charger. You know, a whole struggle. But that's okay because we're almost done here. So, because I'm just going to put this little bit at the top. Yep, it wasn't your internet. It was, it was me. Unfortunately, when a notification comes up on my phone, like telling me you're entering low battery mode because your phone is going to die. It then unfortunately like freezes the the live stream. So it's a very frustrating thing. One of the many technical difficulties I deal with when trying to do live streams, but here we are. So, and one of the reasons um, that I actually chose to do a live stream today is because my laptop is currently getting serviced. Um, because its battery <laughs> is completely shot. I don't think I like that tape there. I might pick that up. Um, so because of that, I can't currently edit videos. Um, I have ones filmed that are ready to be edited, but I can't edit them until I get my laptop back. So I thought a live stream was a good way <laughs> to put out some content for you guys um, that wouldn't be you know, one that I have to edit and have my, my laptop for. But then we have to deal with the issues of the phone, so pick your battles. I'm really not digging what this layering is doing up here. If 
I want this. Oops, sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, do you have a theme for each page? Um, so I typically in my journaling go off of whatever happened that day and let that guide the design for the page. But for today, I was playing with the prompts from Junk Journal July and having fun doing that. So Junk Journal July is something that Make Journals has put on. And basically it's just a bunch of people having fun in their junk journals um, using some specific prompts to help guide their creations. And so I've been, I haven't really been actively participating in it, but I've been following along with it and enjoying um, just seeing what people are putting out there and thought it would be fun to get my creativity working um, to try and use some of those prompts. So the first prompt we did was monochrome and the second prompt we did was layered. And in many ways, I would say that we kind of, we did both, but for both pages, but that was generally the idea. Maybe this sticker, I don't know. Sure, let's put that down. And then I wanna pull in a little bit of the green. So I have these pieces left over from the other page that we did. So maybe I, before I put this down, should layer a bit more. Maybe like that. I'm gonna have to tape that down, it keeps coming up. Uh, yeah, let's tape this down. And then I'm gonna use the corner punch again, wherever I put it, to just snip the corner off and then our sticker can go I wanted to use the leaves part of this, but I don't think it's going to work. I'll just do that for the layered. And then I think this is going to be the last piece I put on this page. <laughs> I know I said that like 10 minutes ago but I mean it this time. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yes, I like that a lot better. Um, I think that helps tie everything together. And now we brought in some of that green, which makes more sense um, in terms of matching this page. So here is our finished entry. Get all my little bits and bobs out of the way. For the 15th, we created a little pocket and did some layering on that. And as you can see, it has a little bit of a donut theme to it with this quote, you can't buy happiness, but you can buy donuts. And that's kind of the same thing. And then we have some donut stickers 
And then just did some layering with washi tape and some alpha stickers. And then in the pocket, and by the way, the pocket we created from a really cool, just reused paper bag. And then we have this great journaling card that really is just for the date and just as a cute little element. Um, it doesn't really serve much of a purpose beyond that, just being interactive. Um, so we have that. One thing that would have been cool to do with this, um, which maybe I'll go back and do, is I might maybe put a little piece here. Actually, I am gonna put a piece here. So my thought was, why don't I put a little piece here, especially this because it's kind of see-through. And then on this, what I'm gonna do is write the kinds of donuts that I got for my coworkers. Um, so I'll try and remember all of the flavors that I got. And to make this extra interactive and layered, we'll just tape it on with a piece of washi tape. Actually, I don't like that washi tape. <laughs> You want, let's use the pink, the pink washi tape. So I'm just going to tape this on with a little piece of washi tape. And then I'm going to keep it um, loose at the bottom because it's attached just fine. But I like the look of being able to one, flip it up and see the donut underneath. And it again adds more textured and more of a layered vibe when I don't perfectly tape it down. So I'm gonna write on here the different donuts that I got. That way this journaling card has a little bit more of a purpose and it has a reason for you to pull it out and look at beyond just having the date on it. So on there, I'll write some of the donuts we got. And then we used the same little twine that we used over on this page. And then we also used beautiful um, different stamping around the edges just to give it more of a weathered um, vintage look. We did the same stamping as we used over here to create this beautiful floral border. And then as a last little touch, we created this layered paper look to basically have our journaling on. So just layered papers and washi tape and stickers and then I'm gonna do my journaling here in black or white gel pen I will have to decide but that is the finished entry these are my two entries and these are some of my favorite pages I've done in a really 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 long time so thank you guys so much for joining me thank you Meg journals for giving me these prompts to inspire me through Junk Journal July, I highly encourage you guys to go follow Meg Journals and the hashtag Junk Journal July over on Instagram and find her on YouTube as well to see some of her process videos. And that's really all I have for you today. I will have more content coming your way when I get my laptop fixed and back in my possession. I have lots of videos to edit for you guys, so I'm looking forward to that. Until then, you can check out my current playlist and catch up on all of the fun. And I would encourage you, if you've been with me this whole time, please, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel by telling YouTube to share my content with others who might enjoy it as well. And if you're not, please do subscribe. And if you want to support me even more, I do have a Patreon page where I put out um, different printables and content for you guys over there. So for example, here is a printable piece. Um, all of these are printables from my Patreon page. These are printables. So lots of fun content over there for you guys to be able to explore your creativity even more. So thank you for hanging out. I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday and weekend, and I'll look forward to seeing you all soon. Until then, friends, keep exploring your abiding creativity and document a life abiding in faith, hope, and love.